we've talked about dimensionality reduction. Uh, the, the, the reason you're doing it is on the surface, the data is often very high dimensional when in practice um, it's, really, uh, it's really not. Um, so why would you do it? Uh, you are reducing the dimensionality of the data. Everything will become a lot more stable. You will need less space to represent the data. So you can represent the face with seven numbers, which is pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty impressive. And everything becomes more smooth. Um, another interesting thing that PCA does is, by necessity, it finds those dimensions in which the data is uh, the most correlated, and it makes them your new coordinates. So what PCA is doing, in effect, is it's rotating the data in such a way that the result is uncorrelated. So you can use PCA, even if you don't reduce dimensionality, you can use PCA to rotate the space so that the dimensions become uncorrelated independent. So, in, um, and, and you can observe that very easily if you, uh, if you take some data which was correlated, you run naive Bayes on it, it's going to perform horribly because naive Bayes can't deal with correlated data. You pipe that data through PCA and all of a sudden naive Bayes is going to be one of your best classifiers. And the reason it's going to be one of the best classifiers is because PCA has rotated the space so that the data is no longer correlated. So the independence assumption now holds, right? You've made it hold by uh, turning the data around. So that's the upside. The downside is often uh, too expensive. So uh, it's a class of algorithms that you cannot apply to very large uh, data sets. And if your goal is fine-grained classification, so if your classes are very fine-grained, PCA usually does more harm than help. So uh, classification in the reduced space is going to be a lot worse than classification uh, in the original space.